There it is. And today's review this is a very exciting review for me. I really like this thing. This here is a Soundstream product. It's, it's the Ingenix series. Stage 2. This is the new series. I mean, look at this. This is crazy. I mean, the, this is the box, people. This is just the box. This thing is impressive. As I always do my reviews, I always take everything out of the box and I show you everything. I go into some detail, explain to you what all is involved in these things, what's included, how they work, how they all fit together. So that way, if you choose to get one of these, you know exactly what you're going to use and what you're not going to use and what you might find useful and what you might not find very useful at all. So aside from this astounding, really cool box, which I must say, um, I'm going to do my best after I get through this, you know, overview part uh, to turn this thing on and show you all the stuff in, in um, you know, in real life on the screen. But, I mean, just look at all this stuff. I mean, the, the colorful, the LED display, the 400 nit rate. I mean, it's things like a computer. You can write yourself a note, picture in picture, calculator, speedometer on there. This is one of the only units on the market which utilizes TomTom as their GPS information. Just like how Kenwood has Garmin. Soundstream went ahead and they used TomTom. Tom. You can actually use an, um, a digital TV tuner, believe it or not, with this unit, which is crazy because who has that anymore? I mean, it's just, they, they just got some really neat stuff, man. It's, it's just, it's nice and it's refreshing to see something new. It's so, you get so tired of seeing the same old crap day after day, same old stuff with a different screen, a different remote, a different harness, so they change this or a little thing here and there. It's nice to see something that's revolutionary. And that's what we got today. And that's why I'm excited. And you could hear it in my voice. And you could genuinely tell that because, you know, when I do some reviews and sometimes when I do other kinds, you could hear different tones coming out of my voice. And today is one of those days where I just really, I'm digging this thing. So there is the, um, the mapping software, which is on a 4 gig card, which should tell you something. 4 gigs, that's a whole hell of a lot of information for mapping. Now... First things first, this here is the main unit because this is the unit, you know, they, they come in a double din, a single din with a flip out, and of course they have this one which is the single din with the flip down, and I'll show you what I mean. On the front face right here, this is actually a detachable face too, by the way. The face will click on there, and once it's on, I'm going to show you what this looks like, so don't worry about it. It's going to come downwards, so it'll actually come out of that, come out of the dash and down, and you can actually angle this and set it up and really do some cool stuff with it. But for basics, your depth before it starts, you know, to the edge of the sleeve is you have six and five sixteenths depth. You roll, roll width. You got seven and two sixteenths, and your overall height you have two and one sixteenths. For your height. So there you have it. And if you care, just because I'm here, I'll do it. With the um, trim ring on there, you got seven and five sixteenths, we'll call it. And width, height, two and five. So it's very standardized size DIN mounting. And like I said, I will get to the part where the face will be on there. You can see how it really works, how it really looks. Uh, so let's start over here with the harness. Number one, look at the quality of this harness. Now, I don't know what you do, what you don't know about wiring harnesses. Um, but this harness, you actually see that there's real copper wire in here. Not that copper clad crap that so many of these manufacturers are pushing. This is the good stuff. And by the way, as a side note, they have a copper treatment on this um, PC board that's in this unit which is very much like the old Clarion Pro audio systems so it's very good for noise rejection and just qu overall quality I mean look at the fuse holders these are like marine grade type of fuse holders you don't see these things anymore I mean who the hell is spending the money to use all this kind of stuff and the gauge of the wire it's very thick it's actually thicker than all the stuff that you would expect to be in this league or higher like a Pioneer Premier or something like that this is actually better that says a lot that impresses me on the back of the unit, you have all your connections. This one here is just for your basic analog antenna. Set of auxiliary RCAs. Over here, steering wheel control. And this here is for the mic. By the way, the, the mic is this little guy. Look at this thing. Look how cool that is. No ugly clip, no nasty, gordy stuff. Just real nice. They give you lots of lead. They even give you a perfect little piece of tape to stick it on there. I mean, what else can you ask for? So there's your mic. 
standard 2.5 millimeter deal nothing exciting going on there over here this here is for the optional uh, digital TV tuner that you'd have to refer to, to uh, Soundstream site for the uh, channel lineup and all that stuff I'm not going to waste my time getting into all that and over here this here is a new proprietary plug for their new iPod cable the IC5 and this here is for the GPS antennas Pro proprietary I always have a hard time saying that word plug for their GPS antenna GPS antenna is located right here not too big not too small just right it is self magnetizing also comes with this mounting plate with adhesive cleaner two-sided tape the whole works what else can you ask for not a whole lot um, back here everything else is all plug-in play so this plug here is for the front and I'll show you that on the uh, the faceplate this here is the uh, the AV input which you can just really quick connect and disconnect onto the front face but we haven't gotten there yet so I'm not gonna waste my time going there this here is your RCA preamp harness by the way 4 volt preamp outputs crazy that's a lot of power for anything find anything else out there that has more than that video output video input dedicated camera input rear stereo outputs front stereo outputs rear subwoofer dedicated mono output line in times two so you have tons of auxiliary sources gigantic book for you to read bring it to church it'll probably pass it as a, as a bible there's your keys, mounting tabs, hardware, everything else you would expect to see. So there you have it. Of course, they give you this nice little case. Look at that. Bing. That's the connector for the uh, front of the face. Look at that beauty, huh? Woo-wee. Right up on here, that's the detach button. Your home screen, power. Um, this one here will adjust the angle and detach right here. USB, now check this out, this is super slick. The USB slides and actually recesses right into the hole. Look at this from this angle. Who's making that, man? That's cool, I like that. Plus right there you have the analog input. Right on the bottom, there's another little slick hiding spot. That's for the SD card for your GPS. I mean, so far this thing is looking really good. I promise you that I will show you what this unit looks like with the face attached on the side view, so there you have it. There it is from the front. Nice. It's clean. I'm going to remove some of that just to get an idea of what the screen looks like. Nice gloss lacquer black finish. Beautiful. Very classy looking piece. I can hardly wait to turn this thing on. Now this is for the very first time I'm powering this unit on. So I give you a good look at what you can expect to see. Gorgeous quality. The screen is really nice. Damn. So there you have it. There's your home screen. So let's get to it. All right, so we're at the home screen of this Ingenix model. Now, you'll see that I've already installed the, GP, uh, the GPS mapping card right there on the bottom of the unit. And you have the icon here for a DVD. I put a CD music disc in there for you. This here icon is for the radio. Over here you have for the movie playback. And this one right here is for your iPod sources or you know external sources. And that's your dedicated IP input source with utilizing the IC5 cable, which is not supplied with this unit. All along the bottom, you see that these other choices that you can toggle back and forth, such as Bluetooth, there's your camera, audio streaming. Um, this one right here is a really cool little thing. Where you could actually say, you know, little notes to yourself, like, you know, you know, if you have to do stuff, remind yourself of stuff. This thing has a calendar, it has a calculator, this thing is like a little computer. Believe it or not, from what I understand, it is that they use the same processor that they use in a uh, compact laptop computer is in this machine, if you can believe it. I couldn't believe it when I first read, it, read about it myself, however... I have to say it is true because I did follow up on it and I never tell you anything that's not the truth. This unit has a bad ass processor built into it. Um, so going forward, there's another feature which is really amazing and I just got to share because it's just crazy to me. 
Um, and the way that worked was... I'm going to try my best to remember because I've been, you know, goofing around this unit, you know, before I started it up and everything. And I just hope I can duplicate it because this unit is really wicked. Right now I'm going to put it on a DVD source because I don't have an IC5 cable for iPod, you know, functionality. I like to show it to you, but of course it's very much like most of the other comparable units out there that give you you know iPod control it's nothing more nothing less it gives you all the text the layout the artist song genre all that crap and then of course you can use your finger to move it all either one by one or you could slide it you know just like you would on a tablet or an iPhone or something like that so with that you know it's pretty straightforward dual zone that's another noteworthy feature so what that is is basically you could have say your GPS running in the background making a plot of where you're going to go to. You could have, say, this disc on here, and you could have a third zone going on simultaneously in the rear of the vehicle, either with the optional TV tuner, or you could have the iPod source, but you could never have the same one split into two separate locations because you would need two of the same sources, of course. But whatever, however you want to break down the, the two dual mode sources that this unit is capable of doing and has connect activity to, you can break them up in the front and the rear of the vehicle simultaneously while having GPS and overlapping Bluetooth hands-free calling all at the same time. So you have a total of four zones simultaneously going on in this unit should you want it to be. This is a PIP button. Now watch this. This is something you have never seen before because I've never seen it. I was on the DVD CD source. I hit the map. Now look at this. Picture in picture just like you have at home TV. There is your, your music CD, there's your map, and you can have your phone going on simultaneously or Bluetooth audio streaming, all with the touch of a button. What? What? Come on, buddy. That's, that's intense. That's really, you know, whoa. You talk about state-of-the-art and seeing things that you ain't never seen before. Today is your day. Um, I don't even know where to even start because this unit is just so beautiful. Um, I already showed you some of the computeristic type of um, features this has you know I don't know if it's really worth a whole lot of time elaborating on it to be honest with you but all your file manager you can actually take um, photos of your family your friends or you know your favorite car or you know your favorite teddy bear or whatever it is and put it right on your home screen and you can actually utilize that as your screensaver believe it or not or you could rip information that's put onto the unit simultaneously take a snapshot and utilize that which is I mean, it's just, it's insane. I haven't seen that since uh, Panasonic got out of the car audio game. And Panasonic was no joke. They had some pretty pretty insane features before they, they, they kissed the uh, car audio world goodbye. But I really want to get into some of these um, settings. I think I'll do the settings first because that's, that's the most fun. To me, it is anyway. Now. You see here you got display, brightness, screensaver, which I was talking about before, your sound and your software, um, your startup mode, um, you could have it set up to do wherever it was when you turn the key off uh, prior to you getting back into the vehicle, your main menu, or you could have the navigation so you could set up your home screen just like you can on a home computer. Rear guidelines, now that there is for your camera, so if you wanted to have an indicator telling you how far of a distance the back of your vehicle is from you know, your, um, your bumper. This you can calibrate and set it up right on the screen. So, whoa. Rear monitor setup, you could set that up to do whatever you want it to do. Mirror the front, or do a separate zone simultaneously, and you, you go crazy with yourself. You can calibrate your touchscreen, which is nothing exciting. Your language, the default is English because, this, you know, I'm in Florida. Um, Modo de Arranque, so I'm going to guess that that's the Espanol. Uh, uh, gee whiz, yeah. I don't know what... What all is, is, huh, yeah, I, I don't know, we got all kinds of problems now, oh boy, sorry, I had to uh, power it down and start it up because I was totally lost with that Spanish stuff, I'm sorry, I don't speak Spanish, I don't understand it, it ain't my thing. So I'm just going to jump right back in there where I was before. Now, we're back where we know our language. So I already touched on all this stuff. Um, 
brightness, you could set this up for automatic, um, for whatever your, your time zone is, and this thing will automatically know and register that by when you're putting in the information on the first time. Your screensaver, which I already showed you, these are some of your default wallpapers. You could add your own, like I was explaining, which is really cool. And the sound, very important. Of course, you know me. If you watch my stuff, you, I'm always very critical when it comes to this. If you don't have this going for you, man, you ain't got nothing. Now, this unit here is not looking too bad. Now, these are all your... These are called, like, SLAs would be to, like, a Pioneer, because everybody knows about Pioneer, right? Pioneer, you know, it's been around for a, a gajillion years. Sound level adjustments, so that way when you toggle from one source to another, you don't notice, like, how it is when you watch TV and the commercials come on and they're, like, twice as loud as the TV program that you were watching and it drives you insane. This will allow you to emulate all the same volume level so they all kind of, you know, are in respective, you know, volumes to one another. So you can adjust all that stuff. This here is for your volume. Center, front, rear, left, right, self-explanatory. Dedicated subwoofer low-pass filter crossover, which has preset settings of 80 hertz, 120, and 160. Buzzer, which you can turn on the audio, so that way when you're hitting all the buttons, it'll you know tell you beep, 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 and this and that. Your loudness feature, which is on and off, very straightforward, meat and potatoes. This is your subwoofer volume control. goes from 0 to 10, respectively. In your EQ, you have... Two user presets, so you can set up for user one and user two. If you go this route, then you can just do this all manually and make it however you like it to be. And then say if you have someone else that drives this vehicle, they would just jump in there, hit user two, and it default to their settings that they have on there. Or you could just use the factory's settings. And you have a seven band digital EQ, which is very nice. Does it doesn't have a digital sound field processor? Or anything like that nothing too crazy but then again I haven't seen any manufacturer really utilizing those as to late not in the last few years anyway so I'm guessing that that's just the thing of the past I guess you know I, I don't know I'm a, I'm a fan of natural sound anyway so to me it's not a big deal now I always want to go back to this home screen real quick and I want to show you some other stuff that I find is very important um, I'll touch on some of the other little f sources like your radio now this is very much kind of like how the Clarion NZ503 looks or the NX603, that kind of stuff. This is, to me, an imitation or a ripoff of that. But I think it's cool. It's a, it's a good look. It's a classic look. The colors are nice. They're sharp. Um, the presets are in a, a nice spot. It works very quickly. And in this Soundstream unit's favor, I'll applaud them because the response time is much faster. The touchscreen is also much more responsive. On the screen, much better. Much more fluent, quick, very fast, just like you would expect on a, on, a, on a tablet. These three buttons, they're a teeny bit laggy, but then again, I'm a little crazy when it comes to that kind of stuff, so I'm not going to get too rancy over it. Um, but for your eject button, when you hit it, you can see that screen stays nice and stable, very, you know, very straight, it's not wobbly or anything like that, not, not in the least bit. That tells me we're working with a quality product here. Home screen, power button, um, I already showed you, but I'll show you again. Right here, I love this, this USB slot, which just hides away like that. It's so cool. And over here, 3.5 millimeter analog AV input if you're utilizing it. This screen, this screen is detachable, and I guess I probably should show you. If you hit the button, the face will come out, you can pull it right off. But for the sake of this, you know, video, I'm not going to get too crazy because, you know, we all got things to do. I just want to show you some stuff on this map, and I'm going to wrap this review up. I got some place to be too. But first, I make sure I do my job. Okay, so you see it left off right where right where we picked up from the last time, so we know that this unit is doing exactly what it should be doing. Okay, so once again, I'm going to hit this GPS icon. And like I mentioned, this is TomTom Tom software, so the same technology you experience utilizing a TomTom Tom portable GPS is what you get right in here. And again, there's that picture-in-picture. Picture. You can get rid of that, just launch it, or bring it back anytime you want, which is very cool. All your quick set icons for your visual settings, audio settings, clock, brightness, picture-in-picture, picture, home screen icons, all laid out right there. Um, colors are right on the money. Screen quality is excellent, and this camera isn't even all that, so, you know, my GPS antenna is connected. There's your zoom out, there's your zoom in. What else are you looking for? 
Let me show you where this system really shines. I want to show you what really matters. Your home screen, where to, your routes, clear route, get rid of places you've been, all your settings. First thing I want to do is the where to icon because this is the most important in my opinion. Favorites, which of course is if you go someplace, you can hit a button, save it to your favorites, make it like a phone book is to your cell phone. Emergencies, it'll find it for you automatically. Recent destinations, pull it up automatically. Itinerary, so if you're setting up multiple points of interest along your destination, set that up. It'll tell you where it is and when you're going if you also have to have settings. You could do that on that notepad thing so you could actually put your schedule right into this stereo and have it in your dash and also have it on your GPS. You can put in your addresses, intersections, and there's more. Point on map, of course, just drag your finger to wherever it is you need to go. Put in the zip code, cities, point of interest, category, which is all the usual restaurants, hotels, you know, shopping centers, travel, that kind of stuff. Point of interest, name, point of interest in city, and the, the, the telephone number. Telephone numbers apply to everything in the United States and Canada. And it, it, so all you got to do is just pop in your area code and your phone number. It only applies to business. It does not work with home, of course, because you know how people move like crazy. Not going to work, but however, this is what you expect. This is the standard by, you know, vehicle GPS, and I was very shocked and impressed to see that it has it. That's not a cheap feature. There's your settings, your color mode, your map view. You can do 2D, 3D, split screen, top, bottom. It does automatic when you put your lights on that the screen will go black in the background at uh, nighttime, and it has this white in the daytime. And, of course, it has a parking light parking light wire indicator so it switches automatically. Your brightness, change all your colors as you can see. Auto zoom so that way when you have something coming up, a turn or something like that, it'll automatically move in and you can set how close you want it to be on. You could also set speed alerts so that way if it'll pay attention to you know how fast you're allowed to drive on the road and this will automatically give you an, uh, an alert and an icon on the screen to, to cool it and slow the hell down. You could turn it on and turn it off if you don't like that feature. Label all your favorite things right on the map, so it becomes your own personal little deal. Click sounds, uh, keyboard, which is basically kind of like, again, on a portable. You could have it, you know, straight up alphabetical, have a QWERTY, which is the most popular, you know, in computers. Um, or this one here, which I'm not even familiar with, but they give it to you anyway. Uh, fuel cost, which it, it'll tell, it tells you automatically by calculation. You have to input your vehicle, your size you know, your average, and it'll automatically calculate and figure all that stuff out, and it'll give you routes based upon your information that you input into it. That's that speed limit thing I was telling you about. Units, this applies to, you know, kilos and miles, depending on where you're located at, what your locale is. Uh, routing options, of course, avoid freeways if you're a car, a motorcycle, a truck, whatever your story is. Language, which we've already had problems with before. We won't make that mistake again, but you have French, Spanish, English, of course, uh, Italian, Dutch, Portuguese, and it looks like that's about it. And there's different people, different names, Emma, Michael, Susan, they're all there to help you out. So I'm going to wrap this up. I'm going to bring this back home. So there you have it, man. That's my review of this Ingenix. This is the very first time I've ever put my hands on one. I've actually sold these for a few years now. And you know what? I really have not been doing myself a favor by not spending enough time with these units. I love this unit. I really like this. This thing is innovative. It's different. It's interesting. It's everything that I love about units. So if you really are a fanatic and you got to have something that's latest, greatest, and super cool, give this thing a look because I love it.